It's easy to spot an experienced cyclist, isn't it? It's not necessarily how lean they are, how fit and fast they are. It's sometimes how they look on the bike, how smoothly they pedal, how they always have the right kit on every occasion, and how they just look very relaxed on the bike. But if you're a little bit envious and feel like that's where you want to be, in this video, we're gonna give you a few tips and pointers on how to be that cyclist and how to feel like you just belong on a bike. First up, your helmet. You just pop it on your head and go, right? Well, yes, you do just pop it on your head, but you wanna make sure your helmet is properly adjusted. So by that, I mean that the straps are nice and snug. You've adjusted it so it sits on your head properly. Like that. It's gonna give you the breast protection and it's gonna help you look the part. What we do see with beginner cyclists is say they've got a new helmet, they're getting into the sport, the straps around your ears and your chin don't fit properly. So sometimes the chin strap will be really loose so it can pretty much kind of come over the chin or it's like super, super tight and they haven't got the kind of your ear in this nice little hole. Take some time out and make sure you fit your helmet properly. It is a little bit fiddly, but it is really worth it. It makes it so much more comfortable as well. And also you can kind of get, this strap here tends to be quite long. So what I've done, I've cut it and then just got a little match or a lighter and just burnt the edges so it doesn't kind of fray. So it looks nice and neat and nice and pro. Another tip to look like an experienced cyclist is to wear a casket or a cycling cap underneath your helmet. This is especially useful on days where the sun is low in the sky or there's a little bit of rain about. Now onto cycling kit. Now it doesn't have to be all matchy matchy, but it does help if you didn't look like you got dressed in the dark. But first of all, you want a nice fitting cycling jersey. You don't want one that's really baggy, but I'll be honest, most cycling jerseys are pretty tight fitting, so that should be a nice and easy one. You also want a nice pair of cycling shorts that fit you like a glove, and also with a nice bit of padding because that's gonna make you feel a lot more comfortable on the bike. Then, something that I think is quite important is the socks. Now, when I first got into cycling, I'll be honest, I just went in my sock drawer and I chose any, any socks. I wore pink fluffy socks, I wore ankle socks. Oh, I, should, I really shouldn't say that on camera, but yeah, I did wear ankle socks. But when we want to look pro, we don't wear ankle socks or pink fluffy socks. We're not triathletes and we don't wear football socks up to here. We just want, you know, nice normal socks. They don't have to be matching to your kit, but I like to have matching ones, but some people are quite good at pulling off like neon colored funky socks as well. They can look really cool. You also want a pair of nice, clean cycling shoes. When your cycling shoes get muddy and you've been out, make sure get back and wash them. It's gonna help look after them a lot better. Now it's not just about how the kit looks, it's also about how it feels. Having kit that's really comfortable on you is gonna help you ride for longer. But you also wanna have a good range of clothing as well. Now I'm not saying you need a whole wardrobe full, but it's good to have those accessories like the arm warmers, the leg warmers, the long finger gloves that are gonna help you keep riding whatever the conditions. So yeah, you can go out when it's snowing, when it's sunny, just go out riding your bike every single day. Looking smooth and effortless on the bike has a lot to do with your gearing. Now, being in the right gear and riding the right cadence is the best way to get the most out of your effort. We see a lot of beginner cyclists kind of ride in the wrong gear. They'll be riding in a really hard gear that will make them feel like they're doing a little bit of a gym session and the legs will really start to burn. But on the other hand, you could also be spinning out like a hamster in the wheel in a way too easier gear and you'll get out of breath really quickly. There is actually a bit of a kind of hack to changing gear. It needs to be quite smooth and effortless. You want to kind of change gear before you feel like you need to change gear. So not leaving it, wait till the last minute where you're already kind of out of rhythm, you change gear and you hear a little bit of a clank. 
Changing gear is a delicate affair and it needs to be done with a thought. You want to change gear with very little load so it's nice and seamless. And it does take quite a bit of practice to kind of get the feel for when you need to change gear, when's the right time, am I putting too much pressure on the pedals? But what I like to do and what I have done in the past is when you're riding with an experienced cyclist, or you're riding behind them, watch when they change gear and kind of copy them. And then when you've done that for a little bit, you kind of get the feel for it. And next thing, it becomes second nature to you. Right, next up, drafting. And this is a skill that you are going to want to master. And I'm gonna say, when I'm out riding with someone else, I am 90% of the time drafting. And what I mean by drafting is when you sit behind another rider or riders and essentially, you can save up to 40% of your energy and you're still going the same speed. I mean, who doesn't want to master that skill? But the question is, how close are you sitting to the wheel in front? Is there a humongous gap? Now, this is something you are gonna wanna work on. You first of all wanna have the confidence and you wanna have the skill to do it too. I remember when I first got into riding, say in the first year, I was learning this whole drafting experience and it was great. And I got a little bit too confident and I got too close to the wheel and it didn't end well. But sometimes I feel like you need that to kind of know your limits. But when you are, you know, practicing getting close to the wheel, you wanna make sure that you're focused. You're kind of glancing down at the wheel in front, you're glancing up, kind of scanning what's coming ahead. And you almost want to predict the rider in front's move before they even make it. So you're really aware, so you can react to anything that's gonna happen. But yeah, it does take a lot of practice, so give it some time and don't get too confident like I did. Taking one hand or even two hands off the bars isn't just about showing off. It's actually a really useful skill to be able to do on the bike. And when you think about it, we all need to eat and drink when we're on long rides especially. And if you can't take your hand off the handlebars, you might end up stopping, pulling over, getting your snacks out, taking a few minutes, then getting back riding. But if you're doing an event and you kind of you don't want to waste time. It is a lot easier to be able to do it on the bike. Just kind of get your hand in your back pocket, get your snack out and eat it. It does get a little bit tricky when you're out of breath and trying to eat, but most of the time it does work. And even being able to take two hands off the bars, put your rain jacket on, put your gilet on if the weather changes, is super useful if you're doing events and races. And it is a really advanced skill to have, but also a really good skill. We do have lots of videos that are really useful over on GCN that is kind of like a step-by-step -step guide on how to take one hand and even two hands off the bar. So if that's something you want to learn how to do, head over to watch that video. Right, there is a lot to take in here, but I think one of the most important things is to just be relaxed on your bike. If you're relaxed on your bike, all of the above things will just become natural and you'll look confident and feel confident as you do it. But I do hope just some of these tips in the video have helped you just a tiny weeny bit, but do let me know in the comment section below if you have any of your own tips or anything that you'd add. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.